Uhiara, Williams, and that's it. And your honor for defendant Shelby Reeves, Karina Sanchez Peralta. Okay. Good morning, your honor. Douglas Turek representing Parkland. Okay. You may proceed. Uh, your honor, this is Ashley Tremaine speaking now. Um, we had filed a motion to strike Parkland's expert designation uh, that they had submitted a couple months back. Um, three main issues, you know, one is that the disclosures are incomplete. Um, however, I understand that your honor has now pushed back those deadlines and Parkland has indicated that it will produce all of these missing documents. Um, but really, I think the bigger issue here is just that the subject of testimony for this person, his name is Alan Kirby, is not expert testimony. I mean, what 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 essentially has happened here is that all of these events took place so long ago, Parkland doesn't have a witness with personal knowledge of anything. So what they're doing instead is putting up a current employee, Alan Kirby, who wasn't around when any of this stuff happened, and trying to put him up as the person to present all of the facts in Parkland's case, and then calling him an expert in order to get around, you know, the rules of hearsay and requirement of personal knowledge. Alan Kirby doesn't have personal knowledge of any of this stuff. He admits as much in his in his uh, statements that he's filed in other cases. Absolutely. And really, the testimony is just a stream of facts that a lay witness can and should testify to. It's things like, hey, here's how much money we spent on something. Uh, here's the reasons why we decided to use these contracts. Here's you know, what our supposed damages are. All things that are perfectly appropriate for a lay witness, if they've got one, but it's not expert testimony. There's no expert opinion being given. He's not you know, <laughs> looking at a set of facts and applying some sort of you know, scientific or uh, other method and, and reaching some conclusion or opinion, all he's doing is just reciting facts. Um, so that's really what I would say is sort of the big picture problem here is that this isn't something that requires an expert in any sense. Um, and I'll actually turn it, I would like to, if I can, turn it over to Ms. Sanchez Peralta for the other issues because I know that she actually filed <laughs> a reply. And Your Honor, I also have the expert designation ready to be pulled up in case Your Honor wants to see it. Um, but one of the issues here, regardless of when um, the court hears this motion, is that not only is uh, Parkland trying to basically give us a fact witness that should either be a corporate rep or nothing, uh, no matter when this is heard, Your Honor, this is not a qualified expert. There's no scientific or technical knowledge. Um, there's no methodology. There's nothing training experience wise that would assist the trier of fact because it's something that the trier of fact would be able to comprehend without the sort of expertise uh, required with an expert opinion. Mr. Kirby is the director of the nursing program now, and nothing within that role is something that the a lay juror wouldn't be able to comprehend. Response, Mr. Turek. Your Honor, um, so Mr. Kirby uh, has been a clinical nurse educator for, for quite a while now. Um, not all at Parkland. He's been at different hospitals. And so he certainly has the background and experience um, to qualify him as an expert on this type of nurse residency program. Um, he's he's certainly not a hard science expert. He's not applying formulas and engineering and that sort of thing, but he does have that background and experience. Um, and that's included in his uh, resume that we provided. And it would be helpful to the the, the jury and the trier of fact in this case, because um, none of these people have the experience of how a level one trauma hospital operates, how a nursing education program operates, the strategic planning behind um, a nursing program like this, uh, including the, uh, the reasons why uh, there are um, this contract obviously has a work period built into it, um, why the residency comes with that work period and why that's important to the hospital. Uh, he needs to testify to the damages that the hospital uh, suffered when the nurses didn't 
uh, complete their work period, which they've admitted they they have not. So um, that's why he's designated as an expert. Um, it's definitely not, like I said, a hard science expert, but it, it, that's not the requirement. Um, he can have specialized training and experience um, that he can apply to benefit the jury in their decision making in this case. And so that's why he's designated. Um, we'll definitely fix whatever um, you know disclosure issues that there are out there. But the the fact of the matter is that he is he is someone uh, that we need to be able to uh, present to the jury to. Uh, give testimony about this whole program and the nurse's role in it and why this is important. Your Honor, response there. Mm -hmm. Simply because Parkland needs this uh, alleged expert doesn't make it sufficient for him to testify as an expert. That's exactly the problem here is that they want to add the weight and the cap of expert to somebody who doesn't deserve it so that the jury will believe it. What's more, this calculation of the costs and damages that Mr. Turek brings up there's nothing within Mr. Kirby's resume or qualifications or experience to speak to him being able to come up with these damages, have some sort of model for these damages, or be able to, in any sort of accounting or specialized um, financial experience, be able to testify to them. Furthermore, Your Honor, Mr. Turk speaks to this insight into the complex operations of a level one trauma center. A nurse educator does not have the qualifications or experience to give the insight into the complex overall operations of a level one trauma center. Still, no matter when this is heard, Mr. Kirby won't qualify as an expert. So I guess I'm trying to figure out what, like, how is this different than any other business? Like, what? Why do we need an expert to testify? Why can't you just have a corporate rep testify about this? Because he's going to have to give opinions as to the need for this structure of these agreements and his extensive background as a director of these programs at multiple locations. Um, because there's going to be, you can anticipate, Your Honor, that there's going to be a challenge uh, of why does Parkland need this? Why does Parkland need a work period after the residency training? Why does Parkland need, I mean, liquidated damages is, is obviously something that's been addressed extensively in summary judgment, but there's going to be uh, issues around uh, the liquidated damages and why that's important. Um, and so all of these things are going to need um, testimony from an expert about why that's in place and why that's appropriate. Um, and I guess in the case laws or anything that kind of looks at it from the employer's standpoint and says a liquidated damage clause is permissible if it's justifiable, is that something that's in the case law? No, Your Honor. And more importantly, what Kirby has been designated for goes well beyond what Mr. Turek has just said. I mean, and, and Mr. Turek said it just a second ago. He said, we need him to prove up our damages. That's what this is. They don't have a witness with personal knowledge and they haven't disclosed any documents or witnesses of anyone who actually knows what their damages are. So what they're doing is putting up Alan Kirby to, so that he can go and sit on the stand or provide an affidavit and say, here's what our damages are. And I don't have to explain why I know this because I'm an expert. That's one of the problems with the lack of disclosure is that there's been no revelation of where any of this data even came from, what it quite frankly, looks like is an attorney created a spreadsheet of so-called damages and gave it to Kirby to sign. Kirby doesn't explain how he knows any of this, where he got the information. It's just using somebody who doesn't have personal knowledge of the issue of damages to prop it up so that they can prove up their case because they can't do it otherwise. And that's back there on your honor, I'm sorry, Mr. Main. Uh, Mr. Kirby, what he does tell us is that Parkland gave him this spreadsheet he doesn't give us any information about where the data comes from, how they came up with these numbers, nothing. In fact, within the own expert, expert designations that um, for Mr. Kirby, it says Parkland gave me this spreadsheet, which goes even further into the fact that Parkland wants to use this corporate rep as an expert mouthpiece, mouthpiece to parrot off what they would like the jury to believe. And also, I mean, I'll just say on this corporate rep issue, you can't pro put a corporate rep up at trial as the defend as the employer corporate rep is something that you use defensively like i can cross a corporate rep and i can have someone corporate rep on a deposition you can't as your own company put up a corporate rep 
as a witness at trial who doesn't actually have the required personal knowledge of the issues they are testifying to, especially if they're not going to tell us where they got the information. And it's not just the spreadsheet that the only spreadsheet we've received is a spreadsheet of the costs of training. We haven't seen anything at all about the so-called damages they're talking about, you know, replacement costs, for example. None of that has been disclosed. It's just Kirby getting up and saying, we've been harmed because somebody told me that was true. There's no factual basis to any of it. It's all hearsay. He has no personal knowledge. And again, he doesn't offer an expert opinion. There are no opinions at all in this disclosure. It is a list of facts that lay witnesses can and should be testifying to. And if they don't exist, then that's Parkman's problem, of course. But you can't just say, well, we can't find anyone with personal knowledge, so here's an expert to give us all of the facts of our case. Correct. Yeah, Your Honor, so there is, there's a lot of points made in, in that uh, response. But so there is an explanation of where the spreadsheet came from. It talks about the University Health Consortium and where those those factors came from. Um, so the, the, it's not true that it's just out there. But the, re the reality is that he can look at the business records of Parkland and he can look at the strategic plan and how this whole process works from Parkland. And he can make himself aware, even though he was not there when the nurses went through the programs, he can make himself aware of that information and give an opinion on what the damages are. Uh, and so they, we talk about hearsay and about what he can rely upon, but these business records that have been provided to the, the defendants um, are, are all something he can review and rely upon in giving testimony. Your Honor, does, no. he does he disclose anything? I guess go ahead and share screen the actual disclosure. Your Honor, um, permission to do so right now? Yeah, go ahead. Can you see my screen? Uh, yep. Okay, so Your Honor, this was filed by Parkland on December the uh, 13th, 2023, ahead of their original December 29th, 2023 expert designation deadline that was revived by the February 28th um, scheduling order. And the very first person is Alan Kirby here. Your Honor, um, do you want me to go directly to Exhibit 1, the only thing they have actually provided, or would you rather read through it from uh, start to finish? Let me just glance through it real quick. Um... And I can zoom. Wait, wait, I say, can we zoom in? I can't. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> You see, these are fact issues. Parkland provides at least one preceptor, supervising nurse. Da, 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 they're just reciting facts. Okay, yeah. Not complicated ones either. Where, where is the opinion here? There is not an honor. I'm asking Mr. Turner. Yeah, Your Honor, he, he's giving a discussion, he's giving testimony about the program and how it works, um, which ultimately leads to the damages that we're seeking in this case. And so it's not just an ultimate conclusory opinion that we're looking for. It's a description of how the program works. Um, that's it's it's outside be, of just... But, but, but yeah, I mean, how the program works, that's what a corporate rep would talk about, right? I mean, I don't see why that's a damage or why that's an expert issue. The only thing I could see possibly is this Parkland was damaged by actions of the defendant. But it has no specifics, no backup documents, no disclosures about what these damages supposedly are. I mean, it's just like this vague, like, oh, we've been damaged. And nothing about not expert testimony. Nothing about Mr. Kirby's experience or alleged qualifications make him an expert that can speak to damages, especially when they're in the financial uh, calculation and methodology world. He is nothing but nothing beyond a nurse director of education. He is not somebody qualified to talk to damages. 
Your yeah, that, that kind of makes sense, Mr. Turek. How does he qualify to testify about damages? Because he uniquely knows what all this means and what it costs and the value of it to Parkland. Um, he's not an accountant, but he does know this program and how it works and how it fits together. And so he's the one that's uniquely situated uh, to give testimony about the value of those damages. Your Honor, nothing about Mr. Kirby's revenue. We haven't, and nobody has told us what these damages, these supposed actual damages are. Kirby never actually recites that opinion. He doesn't say, well, I think it's X amount of dollars, because keep in mind, right now we're in the realm of actual damages. We aren't talking about li the liquidated damages clause anymore. Kirby says nothing about what these supposed actual damages are, and there haven't been any disclosures of any documents at all about any actual damages. And Your Honor, even let's pretend that, that that the disclosures and the complete lack of disclosures weren't an issue here. Mr. Kirby has nothing in his resume to be able to speak to hiring these new nurses or terminating them or the effects in this complex operation of a level one trauma center of getting them back in the system and weighing the ratios of staffing. The resume that's provided speaks only to the educational aspect, which is educating these nurses, not the actual hiring and termination of them. So still, he's not qualified there either. Your Honor, the whole system was linked together, Your Honor. It, it talks about here in this disclosure that there is a process, a strategic process, where they have this residency program in order to staff their nursing. He's uniquely situated to be right in the middle of that and understand that and give testimony about that. Well, he can give lay testimony, of course. I mean, he can get up and say the things that he has personal knowledge of about the the program and the education they provide and how great it is. I mean, sure, as a lay witness, that's fine. But our objection is that what he can say as a lay witness is, of course, limited to what he has personal knowledge of. He can't go beyond that and just start spouting off Parkland's entire case in chief as sort of a puppet witness. I mean, that's exactly what is attempting to be going on here. If they wanna have Kirby testify to the things he actually knows about, we won't object to that, of course, but this goes well beyond that. Nothing about this is so hard or complicated that a lay witness needs an expert to understand it. The basic concept of like, we have an education system. Here's how it works. Here's what we provide. Here's why we think it's valuable. Fine. Put him up there and talk about all of that. He has personal knowledge of it. He can testify to those things, but that's not an expert. Yeah. That's I mean, I, I just, I don't see how the only thing that I could see that's an expert opinion is the calculation of damages. And I'm not sure how he is qualified to testify about that. I guess that's kind of my concern. Um, so I guess I'm going to go ahead and grant the motion to strike. Uh, is that included in here anywhere? We don't, I don't think we've submitted a proposed order yet, if that's what you're asking. Why, why don't you guys work together on an order, make sure it says at the beginning that this was heard on March 18, 2024. Mr. Turek, uh, I want you to make sure that you take a close look at it. I'm not trying to strike this guy from testifying. I just don't think he can give expert opinions. And so... Uh, Your Honor, may, yeah. I, may I request that, that um, so if you're granting the motion to strike, do we have leave to attempt to redesignate by Mar April 5th and try to make this uh, more clear for everyone? Is April 5th, why, why that date in particular? Th that's the deadline for expert designation in this case now. That was the, the deadline that was revived um, about 45 days after after it had passed, Your Honor. Um, that was an opposed scheduling order that was uploaded by Parkland, um, opposed because of the fact that the expert designation deadline had been dead since January 1st, and it was not submitted until uh, February 16th. I mean, I'll just say from our perspective, I mean, I think procedurally, there wouldn't be anything we could do to prevent that anyway. Like you're striking the designation they've already made. If they wanna try and make another designation, you know, go for it. We'll That's just file. Not, yeah. Why, why don't we make that clear in the order that they have the chance, they do have the ability to amend the designation that we're striking the designation on him as an expert necessarily. 
Thank you, Your All Honor. Right. That, give that me an order on that. Uh, try to get it to me here by no later than this Friday, okay? Thank yes, you, Your Honor. Thank, right, you. thank you, guys. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Bye. All right. Our next hearing is... Branch Banking and Trust Company versus James C. Morris. Uh, yeah, good morning again, Your Honor. 112220. Mr. Feldman, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me better now? I can. Much better. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, Your Honor, uh, this court entered a judgment against Mr. Morris in October of 2015 for approximately 2500000 plus uh, plus plus. Plus, um, Truist Bank assigned their judgment to my client, Edgefield Holdings, and we're asking that the court uh, substitute Edgefield Holdings as the party plaintiff in this action. So we got a notice. I've never seen this before, actually, on this case. It says, hot check. Please send individual to the trust department for payment. What is that about? I have no idea. This is on branch banking and trust versus Morris. Yes, sir. Um, it's a hot check. What is a hot check, Your Honor? What is a hot check? What do you mean? You said hot check. A hot check is a, a check that's bounced for insufficient funds. Okay. And I'm just telling you in this file, there's a notification on the system that uh, there was a hot check. I'm just wondering what that's about. I have no idea. I haven't sent any checks to yeah. your off to the clerk. I've never sent a check to the clerk on this. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's you. Um, In my career, I've never bounced a check, Your Honor. I, I'm not blaming you for anything, sir. I'm, I'm not. Don't, don't take that that way at all. I'm sorry if it, you took it that way. I'm just saying the file says that somebody filed a, a hot check, not not you, sir. I'm not not implying that. I'm, I'm so, I apologize if you took it that way. That was not what I. Oh was no, 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 no problem. No problem. Try, trying to say, I'm just saying that's in the system as a notification. And I was just trying to figure it out, but I don't looking at it. I don't think that has anything to do with you. So, uh, so all you're asking for is to substitute the real party in interest. Yes, sir. Okay. Was there at some point a receiver in this case? Yes, sir. Okay. And what's the status of that? Um, they've had trouble finding any assets that are executable. All right, I'll grant your order and it should be in the system by tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You have a great rest of your day. You too. Appreciate it. Okay. Is everyone here on the Santillan versus Eruption LLC case? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I am the plaintiff, and my Tom Stillwell here for Sorrell's Law for the plaintiff, and Miss Perez is here as well. We just got to get; she is appearing right now. You said that's Buffy Martinez. Is that what you said? Um, no, 